What's up family? It's your favorite fellow Earthling, Austin Hustler Hires. Welcome back to the one channel where everybody is welcome, even the haters. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing something I haven't done in a while, and that is I'm giving away a prize. This is a $1 bill valued in silver, 1957 $1 bill, guys. Stay tuned till the end of the video. I'm going to go ahead and give you the keyword to put in the comments down below. All you have to do is comment that keyword, make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and you'll be entered to win that $1 bill. we're gonna be talking about the biggest issues that you're gonna run into from starting your junk removal business to running your junk removal business to getting off the truck in your junk removal business let's go ahead and get into the video let's talk about the first issue let's go all right so let's say hypothetically you just started your junk removal business you got your truck you got your trailer and you're ready to start doing jobs the first issue that you're probably going to run into is how to price your junk removals properly. How to price what your trailer is worth, what you're worth, what your labor is worth. The best way in my opinion to figure out what your trailer is worth is to first break out your measuring tape and measure the dimensions of your trailer. Measure the width, measure the length, and measure the height. Figure out how many cubic yards your trailer is worth. Most people don't know how to get the cubic yardage of their trailer and that's okay. It's not something that an average person thinks about on, on a regular basis. So basically how you do this is you take your, your length by your width by your height, you times those together. You take that whole number and then you're gonna divide by 27, which is the amount of cubic feet in a cubic yard. Once you divide by 27, that's going to give you your cubic yardage. So that's how you do the calculations, guys, and that's the first thing you're going to want to do. Figure out how many cubic yards your container is. After you figure that out, do some research and call different junk removal companies in your area. You're going to call the big companies, you're going to call the small companies, and you're going to figure out an average price per cubic yard. So basically, say you call 1-800-GOD-JUNK and they have a 16 cubic yard container, 15 cubic yard container, I forget which size they have. Um, everyone has different sizes. So you're gonna take that 15 cubic yards and you're gonna take their price. And you're gonna, but you're gonna, well you're gonna take their price and you're gonna divide by the 15 cubic yards. And basically what you're gonna figure out is how much they're charging per cubic yard. And then you're gonna do that with the small companies, the medium sized companies. You do this with like at least I would say between five and ten different companies and this will give you a good average of what people are charging per cubic yard and then you can figure out from there what you want to charge do you want to be the lowest probably not you want to be somewhere in the middle you want to you want to charge what you're worth um, and, and and when we are all charging similar prices then the the competition becomes real competition it doesn't become you know the the customer just calls this person because they know they're way way lower and way way cheaper than all the other companies it becomes okay they're all similar pricing which one is going to give us the better service so anyways that's how i figured out my pricing and that's the first issue you're gonna you're gonna come upon is like what do I charge per for my trailer? And that's how you're gonna figure it out. First, find out your cubic yardage of your trailer by doing the calculations that I just told you, and then you're gonna call around and see what the average price per cubic yard is for all these other junk removal companies, and then charge somewhere around there for your trailer for your load, and uh, and then that is gonna solve your issue. That's gonna help you really uh, feel comfortable with what you're charging in in your area and everybody has different prices in in different areas in my area we all can charge a little bit lower than say california because we have uh i think it's like 32 dollars maybe even it's even like 28 dollars uh per ton which is 2000 pounds one ton is 2000 pounds and they're charging like 32 to 28 dollars and so we can charge a lot less 
than you do in California because California, I know, I think it's like $105 per ton or something like that. So completely different pricing, guys. You have to figure out what you're going to charge per area and then per cubic yard. So that's going to be the first issue and hopefully um, that kind of explained how to solve that issue and figure out what a fair price is in your area so you can be competitive with all of the local junk removal companies and start getting jobs just like that. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and talk about the second biggest issue that you're going to come up on owning a junk removal business. Let's get into it now. Okay, so you've got your pricing down per cubic yard. You know, you feel comfortable. Uh, you're starting to get jobs. You're starting to get customers. You're starting to build a customer base, maybe even a return customer base. And so another issue that you're going to have and you're going you're gonna to run into is tracking all of your jobs, keeping track of all your customers, uh, keeping all their information so that way when they call back, you don't have to collect it every time. Um, it just makes everything easier to have some kind of system to track your customers. Now, uh, for me, I use WorkEase. And uh, I'll show you right here. This is the logo and everything. So WorkEase has been great for me. There's other things like House Call Pro. I've heard uh, Jobber um, recently. And there's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of other tracking systems out there. There are literally a whole bunch of them. So I know it, it's hard to choose which one to use. But I will tell you that a lot of the big reputable companies that I have uh, seen and dealt with are using WorkEase. And if you're interested in using WorkEase, guys, real quick, there's a link down below at the end of this video. You can click on that affiliate link. Uh, it goes, it's through me, and basically what that is, you'll get 14 days for free with WorkEase. You don't have to put a credit card in or anything. And then if you choose to go with WorkEase, they'll give you three months. They'll give you 25% off for the first three months that you're with them all because you use my link. I am affiliated with them guys, and I do wanna tell you that just so you know. Um, but that is an issue that you're gonna run into. You're gonna run into, okay, like where are my jobs at? You're, you're, maybe you're keeping it on a calendar all on paper, old school. Maybe you're keeping it on Google Calendar on the computer. Um, and, and that works at first, but once you start getting a big customer base and people are calling left and right, maybe you even have to hire an office person to pick up the phone calls and put the jobs in the system. Uh, WorkEase, Jobber, Home House Call Pro, uh, like I said, there's a whole bunch of other ones. Those are like three of the main ones that I'm hearing lately. I know that Junk Removal Authority uses WorkEase and they recommend WorkEase to everybody that they work with and so do I. If you guys are watching, I thank you to all 14 people that signed up with my link. That definitely helps me and I hope that WorkEase is really working out for you and you see the value in it. So anyways, you want to find some kind of system to track your customers. This is going to be an issue. I promise you and I guarantee you, you're going to have to get a system eventually to track your customers, to track your jobs, to take your payments. And WorkEase does it all on one system. So you can track how long it's taking for your text to get a job done. It sends you an email every time they get a job done and they take payment on site, whether it's cash, card, or check. Uh, and they have these systems set up in place to make everything run really smoothly. They have time slots and calendars and you have, even have different logins for your texts if you want. They give you phone numbers to call and text the customer from so you don't have to use your personal phone number. I personally, I do not use my, my phone number for the business. I have an 833 phone number, I have two local numbers for people to call, and then I have two WorkEase numbers that my texts use to send out text messages letting our customers know that we're on the way. So this, these programs like this will help you grow your business and scale your business and it'll help you solve the issue of where is this job at, of where did that piece of paper go, or maybe in Google Calendar you forgot to say you forgot to get their email address or you forgot to get their phone numbers maybe you forgot to get the zip code and the the zip code um, is the one thing you need for Google Maps to pull it up accurately because you know those maps sometimes pull up addresses all wacky and everything 
So what Workies does in systems like Workies, they will give you a pre-existing form that helps you remember what to ask the customer for when you're talking to them on the phone. So you're like, okay, boom, name, number, email, address, description of what the items, uh, how they found you. So you can keep track of how each customer found you and say at the end of the month you want to look at that. And you can say, okay, well, this customer, uh, you know, this percentage of customers found me through Google. This percentage of customers found me through the signs on the road. This percentage of customers found me in this magazine or the newspaper. And it really helps to find out what marketing strategy is working for you best. So then you can capitalize on that marketing strategy and get more customers that way. So getting systems like this is really an, an, an advantage to you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the third issue that you're gonna have when you're running a junk removal business right after this commercial. All right guys, so maybe you're taking a guess what that third issue is right now just because of where I'm standing. This is my backyard and this is the office where we run our business, my let it go junk removal business. Um, so the third issue is actually finding the property to park all of your equipment to run everything from. Now, it, you might want to start a junk removal company and you live in an apartment complex. Maybe you live in a community where they have, um, what do they call that? I don't have one, a homeowner's community to where they're like, you know, a homeowner's association is what it's called. To where they're like, oh, you can't park your truck here. You can't have a truck with logos. You have to keep your grass cut. Your shingles can't be this color. Um, so anyways, maybe you live in an area where you're restricted on the amount of land, the amount of parking space you have. And the one thing with junk removal or dumpster rental is you have to have trucks. You have to have a trailer. You have to have some space to put junk in, right? And so that's going to be the third issue. That's, you know, the, and these issues are not going in any particular order. It's just the order that I'm listing them in. You may run into these issues, you know, uh, the third one first or the, the, the first one last or whatever. But that being said, you need property. And I have a few solutions for you to maybe help you figure out where to park your stuff um, and, and solutions that I've seen other companies use and do. Now they're more um, cost effective, so you have to use more money, which is gonna bring your profits down. But if you really believe you're in a good city with lots of people that need junk removals and dumpster rentals, then this won't be a problem for you. So say you need property, you don't live on an acre like I do, and I have plenty of space to park my stuff. Uh, you're gonna wanna have a rental, some kind of um, property where you can just park your stuff. Maybe it's just a, uh, a landfill that lets you park your dumpsters and your trailers there and you, you can take your truck home and take the magnets off if they don't like you having advertisement on your trucks. Um, so th there are several different solutions to this, whether it's, it's renting a property um, or just, or just uh, well, well, actually, that's it. You, you need to make sure that you find a place to rent or even buying a building if you have enough capital to do that or just buying a piece of land if you have enough capital to do that. Uh, these are solutions that you can use to uh, solve this problem, this issue that you're going to have in junk removal. I can almost guarantee you that you're going to need some space, uh, some property to park your stuff on. So just go out to, you know, like I said, the landfill. Uh, maybe you can find a property that uh, they're already doing something similar to this. Maybe they do demo or construction or maybe it's a, a roofing company, um, a shed uh, building company. And sometimes they have extra space in their parking lots and their fields or whatever that they're, they will be willing to rent to you for little to nothing. Um, I know a guy that uh, was in Orlando and that was the issue he had. He lived in a, a community with a homeowners association and what he did was found a place around the corner that I believe they were just um, just like an industrial park basically and they had different companies in there and he rented a piece of their land to park like 15 of his dumpsters for 300 a month. So that's a very affordable price 
for someone that is pulling in thirty to forty thousand dollars a month from a junk removal company. So if you're willing to spend, you know, three hundred, four hundred, even five hundred bucks, it will be worth it to you. Um, in the end, that is an issue that you're gonna come, you're gonna come up on, and you're gonna have this issue with property. If you don't already own some property, uh, which a lot of you I know do, you own some property and a lot of you don't and you've probably figured this out already. But this is definitely an issue for the people that are just getting started. Maybe you're thinking about starting a junk removal business. This is something you have to think about guys. You're going to have to have a place to park more trucks and more trailers and more dumpsters once you grow. This land uh, helped me to kind of get ahead of the curve. As I grow, I can just park more and more things here, and uh, that's it. That's it, guys. That's that's the third issue with owning a junk removal company and trying to grow it as big as you possibly can. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the fourth um, issue that you'll probably come up on. And like I said, this is not in any order, guys. But um, there is a fourth thing that you're going to have to worry about in the junk removal industry when you're growing your company. Let's get into it. All right, back in the AC, feeling good. So, let's talk about that fourth issue, guys. Like I said, this is not going in any particular order, it's just the order that I'm listing it in. The fourth issue is hiring people, getting people to work for you, and good people to work for you, the right people to work for you. People that are gonna stick with you for the long term. People that are gonna believe in your dream. People that are gonna be here, believing in you and your company growing with you, seeing that they can actually make a living or even a career out of working with you and helping you build your business. So the way that I have found my people and the people that are kind of really helping me out right now is cycle through, cycle through, cycle through, cycle through. I've been, I've been through, I've been through so many people guys. Through, uh, over the last five years, I've been through a lot of people working in this business with me. And more than half of them were just people that just wanted to work here for a month or two until they found something better. Because, let's face it, junk removal is not for everybody. And I say that with a smile because it's so true. Um, there, are, there are people that are not made for this type of work. And then there are the people that are made for this type of work. So you're going to be on the search for people that are like you, like-minded, and most likely people that you can be friends with, people that you wouldn't mind going to the bar and having a beer with. Those are the type of people that you want to bring into your company. If you're bringing somebody in that you would never hang out with in your entire life to work for you, then there's probably going to be an issue. They're most likely not going to work for you long, and even if they do, they're not, they're not, um, they're not family, right? So we are all starting family-owned, privately-owned junk removal companies, and in the beginning, you need those people that you can connect with, right? You need those people that are going to be your friend, those people that are going to uh, be trustworthy. Those people that you can literally trust to hop in your $40,000 truck and drive. People that you can trust to go to these junk removal businesses, whole house cleanouts, and they find diamonds or gold or silver or money or, um, you know, there's so many things you can find that if they're not a trustworthy person, they could just stuff it in their pocket and keep going with their day and then not even think about it when they get back to the office to tell you they take it home, sell it, and you're screwed out of whatever you may have found in that junk removal. Something that you gotta do to prove like, hey, I appreciate you being trustworthy. I appreciate I appreciate you being honest and giving me the stuff that you found. And now whatever value I get out of it, I'm gonna give you a piece of that pie. Because that is that's what it's that's what it's all about, guys. If you do find these people that are trustworthy and they end up giving you the stuff that they find, then that is, that's a person that you want to take care of. You want to pay them well. You want to give them a piece of the pie when they find something. You want to treat them fair. You want to treat them like a friend 
when they ask for days off, you want to give them that day off. You want to um, make sure that they're comfortable working here. You want to make sure they have waters. You want to make sure they have a truck with AC in it. You want to make sure that like basically you make it so easy on them to go out in the field and do these jobs that they just are happy working here. That they are, they're just, um, you know, what, what is the word I'm looking for? They're so ecstatic to work here. They're so comfortable working here that they wouldn't want to start looking for another job. And that's what I, I do my best to um, make it really comfortable for the people working here. After I find the trustworthy people, I make them really comfortable. Now when people, um, now when I hire people in the very beginning, I have, a, I have a very big trust issue with people guys. I'll be very transparent with that. I don't trust people until they, they prove to me that they can be trusted. And that's just the way the world is these days. Maybe you are a little more um, trusting than I am, but when you start hiring people, if you're in the process of maybe thinking about hiring a person because you're getting busier and busier, go to Facebook and, um, and, and, and ask for recommendations for people that need jobs. Maybe ask your friends for recommendations. Those are gonna be the type of, um, those recommendations are gonna be better people than just going out there and finding random people off of Craigslist or off of the street or even on these paid websites where people are looking for jobs and you're paying to find people looking for jobs. You're gonna find better people through recommendations um, than you are just going going and putting an ad up on Facebook saying, hey, we're hiring, which I'm not gonna say we don't do. We, we hire people off of Facebook and we, we've hired plenty of random people. But make sure you do some kind of interview. Make sure you talk to them, get to know them a little bit, um, feel them out, maybe even take them on a job or two just to see how they work because that is really the only indication uh, that they're going to be a good uh, employee to you or not. That's that guys. That is the uh, fourth issue that I see in starting and growing a junk removal business and making sure that you are successful. There is one other issue that I want to talk to you guys about and then we're going to go ahead and end the video. I'll give you the keyword to enter down in the comment section to win this $1 bill. Last but certainly not least, issue number five that I see with junk removal businesses on a regular basis. So issue number five is when you're very, very busy, you're getting jobs left and right, a lot of companies, they'll stop doing marketing, right? They, they won't, maybe, maybe they won't stop completely, but they will stop doing as much marketing as they were doing when they were slow. Now this is a big issue, guys. If you want to stay busy, really, really busy like you are, even though you're super busy right now, you need to find time to do the same amount of marketing as you would do if you were really slow. This is important to keep your business going steadily and to keep it growing steadily, get more and more business, more and more return customers as you go. So that is an issue that I see and this is an issue that you can easily solve. When you're really, really busy, guys, you're making a lot more money than you were, right? Use some of that money to maybe put up a Google ad so it's marketing for you and you don't have to do much except for set it up initially. Go in and tweak it every once in a while. I do have a video on how to create Google ads that may help you out for starters. Um, another thing you could do is while you're out on jobs, take 10 to 15 minutes after every job and then put some signs out. Get some signs made up. Put some uh, flyers on people's doors. So that's a, this is this is a called guerrilla marketing. You get your name out there for free as much as possible. And while you're out in the field, you're still marketing for your company. You're putting signs out. You're putting flyers out. Maybe stop by your local realtor's office if you're just dri maybe you're driving somewhere where you don't usually go, but you service that area. You want more business in that area. Stop by the realtor's office. Look it up on your phone real quick. Google is a really good tool to use in a business for marketing. So when you're out in the field, make sure you go and, and look up these realtors or roofing companies. If you want to rent dumpsters out to roofing companies or construction companies, um, if you want to go to even the restaurants or the malls, all of these places have junk. Everybody has junk. 
So just make sure that you're doing as much guerrilla marketing while you're busy, the same amount as, as when you're slow. Yeah, do the same amount of marketing no matter what. Just keep marketing, guys. Don't slow down on your marketing just because your business is picking up. Because trust me, it will slow down again if you don't keep that marketing up. You have to keep showing it to new people. That's the only reason you're getting so busy in the first place is because you're doing all that marketing. So this is a big issue. And for new uh, business owners, you may not know this. It's something that's just super simple and, uh, and it's common sense to a lot of people, but some people don't think about it. They're like, oh, I'm busy, so you know, I could slow down my marketing. And when you do that, once your business starts to slow down, your marketing is still slow. And then, and then all of a sudden, you're, oh, I need to throw all these ads up. And it takes two or three weeks to get busy again because of the fact that you slowed your marketing down. That is a big issue that I see. And it's a, a very common issue and something that people don't really think about that often. Especially when you're busy, you see all this money rolling in. You're just like, yeah, making it rain. And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, uh, well, I need to put this in my pocket because we're slow right now. And uh, yeah, that's something that I just wanted to bring up to you guys. That's definitely a big issue. And you can solve that very easily by just continue your marketing. Just continue marketing through, whether it's guerrilla marketing or doing Google ads or Facebook ads or even doing $5 ads on Craigslist. All of these work to get you business. Thanks for watching this video, fellow Earthlings. I'm glad you made it all the way to the end. Now I'm gonna give you the keyword to win this $1 bill. Enter down below the keyword George Washington to win this $1 bill. You'll be chosen randomly and I'll come back to the person that wins so you can send me your address and I'll send you a silver value $1 bill from 1957. I appreciate you watching, guys. This has been Austin Hustle Hires with another video, Epic Hustle Ethics. We'll see you next time. Shoot.